thing you should do when you want to get back on or actually deeply understand a certain topic, especially in science, is to understand what your problem is. As a German saying goes, acknowledging a problem is the first step to improvement. It, it just means that when you know that there is something wrong or you know what is wrong, then that's basically the step 1.0 to actually improve and get rid or like solve this problem. Now, I feel like the way you understand a certain topic can be measured on a spectrum where one side is you just did a tiny mistake and you don't understand what's wrong there. So as soon as you get like figure out what why this one equation doesn't make sense, you will like understand everything or you already know pretty much everything, you just have a few questions here and there. I feel like this is the one side. And the other side is that you have no clue what's going on, that you literally don't know what the teacher is talking about. And pretty much speaking, at least speaking from experience, people tend to, or even myself, tend to be on that spectrum some, somewhere. It is pretty rare for me to be like at one of those sides but rather in between somewhere so as soon as you know what exactly or how deeply you don't understand this topic you can start working on that or you can work with that because you don't really have to take the first few steps which i'm gonna explain in a few minutes if you are on like more of the side of the spectrum where you already understand pretty much all of it but if you are on the other side of the spectrum then those steps are rather helpful for you a real life example would be literally me a real life example would be me we started a new topic i think about like a week ago and i do understand like the most part i'm not a hundred percent sure that i know how everything works but i get the basic concept but in the last topic, which we still have to take a big exam on, which is quite awful, <laughs> um, I don't really have a clue what's going on. There I need to take more steps to actually understand the whole topic than with the new topic. So that just shows you the different positions you can find yourself in, in the way of understanding a topic. Now actually moving on to the steps to understand or like to solve your problem. The first step is to know the basics. That includes knowing terms and their definitions as well as formulas and maybe also some like fields the knowledge you learn or like the stuff that you learn is used upon because that usually helps me firstly understand what even the concept or like the thing I'm learning about really is or like how it's used in real life. With terms I like to use flashcards or even just um, creating a little overview where I write the term and then under it the definition and maybe just color code it. For example in chemistry I need to learn the different colors of certain elements when they react with acids. So what I'm gonna do, because I'm a very visual learner, is I'm gonna space them out in my room. Because um, I sometimes remember, okay, like I wrote something down in the bottom right corner of like the third paper of my, my study paper, whatever. So I'm just gonna write the element with its colors down on a post-it and I'm just gonna display them in my room, one on the door, one on my TV, one, one on my closet, one on my desk and by just having it visually spaced out and separated, the same thing is happening in my head and I actually can take or have like screenshots of those post-its in my brain. That's actually how I usually learn vocabulary items is that I just take a screenshot with my brain and then I just have the book page in my head. So I never really learned any vocabulary items, but that's not the point. Um, the point is that 
use the methods that work for you that help you memorize stuff and actually try to understand basics and terms and maybe also how they're connected for example like reduction and oxidation in the redox reaction maybe try to see how they work together and you can actually use a few different ways of doing that as i already ex explained how i'm going to do it with chemistry you can also study with some friends maybe like have them explain the basic terms to you and then you trying to recite or repeat what they said and that sometimes helps people just choose whatever works for you if you work alone you could also watch some videos upon a topic i often do that in history uh, history is a subject where you don't have a problem understanding anything but it's just easier to like have the information structured and then seeing okay that's the topic i have to like handle I, that i have to study and in the videos usually the people minimize the information and have the information structured pretty well so that's what i also really like to do the next step is like this video focused on like the science stuff because i want to do a separate video on how i for example learn for maybe english or like languages in general especially in, in mathematics you ha usually have a basic rule book which you could follow to solve questions of course you have formulas but there are also some types of like questions where you have to take a few extra steps or maybe even multiple formulas to solve a certain question it's usually always the same it's a sort of algorithm you can study what i really like to do in maths or even chemistry because sometimes we also have a sort of algorithm for example in, with redox reactions so what i like to do is i make myself a little list with the general task of those questions for example if you have to analyze a function you have multiple steps which you have to take and then multiple formulas where how you can solve the, those uh, steps and I like to just make myself a list of step one step two step three and I usually just follow that and when you which is going to be on the next next step practice with time you kind of memorize the algorithm and the chance of getting something wrong with, by using the algorithm is pretty low or at least lower than just doing it out of nothing now that you actually know what's going on and kind of have a feeling of how to do it it's time to practice you probably won't get around this especially in maths and chemistry it's really important to practice what you learned or what you have to actually solve because in a lot of times which i noticed in maths for example i understand the basic concept but if i actually have to do those practice questions without like being able to stop and like google something or like lo look at my notes I actually can't do that and that's also what kind of threw me off in the first exam in maths i was literally sitting there like oh how how do you actually do that i i never thought about it and to avoid that happening again i bought a book which contains a lot of practice questions that are matched to our school book buying extra material of course isn't something that everyone can afford and I really understand that having access to those extra materials or that to general like materials that help you is a huge privilege. Even um, having access to old tests and exams that maybe people a few years ahead of you took and being able to review, review what maybe they had to do on the exam is so helpful. And of course, not everyone can access that but in some ways you could maybe also ask another person if they could just send you a few photos of maybe the practice book that they have um for example for the exam that we took i think last last week um and maths my book wasn't here so i asked a classmate which i knew had this book and i just asked him hey could you send me like a few pages that i could do and he did it try to like ask people if they would be open to give you anything um i for example also have a collection of books which include the most important things for the thing i have to take to graduate i have those books for um a few subjects i don't need 
every single one of them because for example history and geography are subjects that I'm pretty good at so I don't really need it but it's good to have and those for example were gifted to me by my mom's friend because her daughter did graduate a few years before me so I can use them now which is very very great. They didn't cost anything for example so if you have any older friends or older siblings that maybe took similar or the sa even the same classes as you just ask them if hey do you have your exam that was uh, that you had to take on a topic do you have your notes or anything try to find resources a lot of times especially for like those practice books you have to pay money and not everyone is able to do that but there are a few ways that you could try to still get your hands on some extra material without having to pay money if you have already studied with friends on this topic then maybe the last step isn't that necessary for you but you could still kind of switch it up a bit. Um, I'll explain in a second. In the end, if you are sure that you understand everything, that you're a pro at this topic, you can discuss with your friends or classmates a few like things, maybe before the exam, even just five minutes before, which isn't the greatest idea. But by just speaking about it, you sometimes notice, okay, I maybe accidentally forget something or like I have memorized, I always say the wrong formula, even though I know the right one. Um, so those little mistakes that could end up being fatal in an exam are noticed in those conversations. And if you still have questions on like a few different things that maybe the internet can't answer or even chat GTP can't give you an answer to. You could also ask your teacher. So now we're at the end of the video. I really hope you did get an insight into maybe how you can try to understand a few topics, especially the scientific part of school a bit more. Um, that's what I try to also do, especially in chemistry and mathematics. You could also apply this to physics, which I didn't really talk about, but you could also just do the same stuff in physics and pretty much every other science, but I personally don't have physics anymore, so it's not really relevant to me anymore. No matter how, I hope this video helped you. Um, again, use the tips that were helpful, discard of the rest, have a fun week studying and just a nice rest of your week, and we'll see each other next week.